This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Anarchists make revolutions, not war. Beware of struggle. Not a few radicals get involved in politics because they know everything about resisting and little about anything else. They turn every interaction into a conflict between the forces of good and evil, taking a stand and drawing the line until it really is them against the world. For would-be career agitators, this can be a great way to maintain that career, but it accomplishes little else beyond getting people agitated in the strictest sense of the word. Most will just stop paying attention entirely. Who doesn't already have enough antagonism and unpleasantness to deal with? There are always wars waiting to be fought, against, against, against. Fighting these wars perpetuates the dualities that give rise to them. Anarchists anachronize wars by transcending oppositions. That is revolution. Don't join an existing conflict on its terms and make yourself a pawn of its patterns. Redefine the terms of conflict, from democracy versus terrorism to freedom versus power, for example. Find ways to make premises subvert themselves, to draw people together in ways they thought impossible, to upset the entire paradigm of struggle. Not a position, but a proposition. So if you want to provoke revolt, don't draw a line between yourself and the rest of the world and threaten everyone across it. Don't propagate a universal program. Don't campaign for recruits. For heaven's sake, don't educate the masses. Forget about persuading people to your opinion. Encourage them to develop the power to form their own. Everyone having their own ideas is more anarchist than everyone having the anarchist idea. Any central organization or recognized authority on revolt can only stifle self-determination by ordering it. Individuals acting freely, on the other hand, can inspire and reinforce liberty and resistance in each other. Independence, like all good things, is available in abundance. It certainly doesn't need to be, and cannot be, doled out sparingly by a central committee to constituents waiting in breadlines. When it comes to addressing others, don't try to say the truth. Meddle with the truth. Undermine it. Create a space in which new truths can form. Introduce questions, not answers. And remember, not all questions end in question marks. For the revolutionary, the essence of a statement lies in its effects, not whether or not it is objectively true. This approach distinguishes her from philosophers and other idle bastards. Historians tell of the mighty emperor Darius, who led his troops into the steppes with the intention of subduing the Scythians and adding their territory to his empire. The Scythians were a nomadic people, and when they learned that Darius's forces were to descend upon them, they broke camp and began a slow retreat. They moved at such a speed that though Darius's armies could always descry them on the horizon, they were never able to close in. For days they fled ahead of the invaders, then weeks, months, leaving all the food in their wake destroyed and all the water poisoned. They led the intruding armies in circles into the lands of neighboring peoples who attacked them, through unbroken deserts where gaunt vultures licked bleached bones. The proud warriors, accustomed to flaunting their bravado and swift, dramatic clashes, were in despair. Darius sent a message with his fastest courier, who was barely able to deliver it to the laziest straggler of the Scythian flank. As your ruler, it read, I order you to turn and fight. If you are our ruler, came the reply, scratched carelessly into a rock face they came upon the next day. Go weep. Days later, after they had given up all hope, the scouts made out a line of Scythian horsemen charging forward across the plain. They were waving their swords excitedly and letting out great whoops of enthusiasm. Caught unprepared, but relieved at the prospect of doing battle at last, the warriors took up their arms, only to discern in confusion that the Scythians were not charging their lines, but somewhat to the side of them. Looking closer, they made out that the horsemen were pursuing a rabbit. Upon this humiliation, the soldiers threatened mutiny, and Darius was forced to turn back and leave Scythia in defeat. Thus, the Scythians entered history as the most unconquerable of clans by refusing to do battle. Anarchism is a paradox, but it's the kind of paradox we anarchists relish. Urging people to think for themselves, 
seizing power to abolish it, making war on war, these are all contradictions. But it's good tactics to engage in obvious hypocrisy if you want the rebels to depose you along with other authorities. Flying a black flag to express opposition to flags sounds senseless, but living in the shadow of so many flags that flaglessness is interpreted as acquiescence, it may be sound senselessness. Better a black flag than a white one anyway. Create Momentum So, create momentum. Don't sit endlessly in meetings, meeting about when you should be meeting, to discuss how to conduct your next meeting. If your masochistic comrades feel the unfathomable compulsion to spend weeks, months, years of yammering, hammering out the wording of a platform to which they can all pledge themselves, and then further years in internal dissension and rupturing, let them. But don't feel obliged to join in just to prove how committed to the revolution you are. Don't feel obliged to join in anything. This is your revolution. Create momentum. Don't demand change. Realize it yourself with your actions. All you can accomplish is what you do yourself with your companions, and that's a lot. This is how you keep your dignity in a mad world, how you write your own life story and thus let others know they aren't powerless either. Acting on your desires puts you in touch with them, otherwise you have to put the same energy into disavowing them. Skip down the street if you're happy, burn down a building if it outrages you. Love blossoms on a battlefield, it's easier to release yourself to it when you're ready to back it up. When you live out your own most secret wishes, you'll find you express those of others, too. Find yourself projects that engage you, that put you in situations in which you are wholly present in the moment, and don't be afraid of being unrealistic. It is precisely the unreal that needs realizing. You can't create unless you can dream. Create Momentum Anarchists don't give instructions, we give license. Help others give themselves permission to live by setting precedents and offer support, share skills, create opportunities for the civilians around you to express their own radical desires in action. You'll be surprised who will fight the pigs in the street when the chance arises. Don't sighingly sign petitions, pose for the cameras, wait for some window of opportunity. Do participate in town parades and street festivals break into abandoned buildings to throw great banners down the sides, start conversations with strangers, challenge everything you thought you knew about yourself in bed, maintain a constant feeling in the air that something is happening, live as if the future depends on your every deed, and it will. Don't wait for yourself to show up, you already have. Grant yourself license to live and tear those shackles to ribbons. Create momentum. Beautiful anarchists desire you. These days it can be difficult, even terrifying, to be an anarchist. You may well be one of those people who hides her anarchism, at least in certain situations, lest others, equally scared and probably by the same things, accuse you of being too idealistic or irresponsible, as if politely burying the planet in garbage isn't. You shouldn't be so timid. You're not alone. There are millions of us waiting for you to make yourself known, ready to love you and laugh with you and fight at your side for a better world. Follow your heart to the places we will meet. Please don't be too late. Okay, I'm interested. What do I do next? Not to be brusque, but haven't you been paying attention? We're not trying to get you to convert to a religion or vote for a party. On the contrary, the best and the hardest part of this is that it's entirely in your hands. Rousing Conclusion in some moments in this insane world, anarchy appears in fragments, whispering of hidden lives that beckon from within this one. Those hours you spend with your best friends after work, the remains of a poster pasted on an alley wall, that instant masturbating or making love when you are neither male nor female, fat nor skinny, rich nor poor. In other moments, that insanity is the exception, the fragment, and anarchy is simply the world we live. 100,000 of us can found a new civilization, 100 can transform a city, 2 can write the bedtime stories our children have been waiting to hear, and sow the seeds for millions to come. When one of us defies the protection racket of public opinion and necessity, and drops everything to live as she has dreamed, the whole world receives the gift of that freedom. When we fill the streets to dance and blow fire, we can remember with our bodies that we deserve such dances and such space for them. When the ski resorts burn and department store windows shatter, 
for a moment, private property is neither private nor property, and we create new relations between ourselves and a cosmos that is suddenly ours and new once more. If we risk our lives, it is because we know only by doing so can we make them our own. See you on the front page of the last newspaper the motherfuckers ever print. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.